In today's video, we're going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the brand new top of the line Generation 4 Pro Sharpener from Wicked Edge versus the sharpener that it is replacing the Generation 3 Pro. While the Generation 3 Pro is a wonderful piece of engineering, there have been some key design improvements on the Generation 4 Pro. All of these features will be covered in today's video, along with some demonstrations of the machine. If you want to see the overall effectiveness of a Wicked Edge sharpener, you can check out my previous review of this Gen 3 in the cards above, where I compare it with various other sharpening methods. Here and in my previous review, we are looking at the Pro models, which is the top of the Wicked Edge line. Top of the line. But I want to note that there are other cheaper options in their product line that will yield similar results. They will just require a little bit more time and adjustment in comparison to these more feature-rich Pro models. From what I understand on the Gen 4, you'll also have the option to forego the carrying case, the cabinet, and the micro-adjust, which will also lower the price. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where I will summarize my overall thoughts on the two sharpeners and the improvements, and if you should throw away your Gen 3 Pro. Ouch! Boy, that hurts! Like the Gen 3, the Gen 4 Pro came with a sweet, hard-covered carrying case. I did notice that there were some slight differences in the case from the Gen 3 to the Gen 4, so they're not exactly the same, but for all intents and purposes, I'll put this at a tie. Right out of the box, the dimensions of the two sharpeners are very similar in height, depth, and width. The overall height of the vise is a little bit shorter on the Generation 4 than the Generation 3. The top plate on the Generation 4 is larger in order to cover the ball-bearing slides, and of a gray color in comparison to the blue of the Generation 3. When it comes to storage, Gen 4 definitely comes out on top with three shelves instead of two shelves in a Generation 3. From what I've been able to gather, the vise on the Gen 4 is less mechanically complex for the user and requires less force to operate. It does away with the Gen 3 tension adjustments for the jaws, which is nice since it gives you one less thing to fiddle with during the setup of your blade. The arm on the Gen 4 has a pivot to allow the user to add leverage during clamping, but also to move it in and out of the way during sharpening and angle adjustment. The micro adjustment on the Gen 4 has been significantly upgraded. One issue with the Gen 3 that I experienced after my initial review was the backing out of the micro adjust jam bolt. If not caught early, this would actually cause the changing in angle during sharpening. The Gen 3 problem was due to the jam bolt being placed on the same axis as the ball which is perpendicular to the plane that the arms are moving on. This basically allowed the arms to back out the jam bolt during operation if it was loose for any reason. The Gen 4 not only has a jam bolt off access to the joint, but also a rack and pinion system to advance or retreat the fine angle adjustment. It seems pretty robust overall and allows the user to add about 5 degrees of angle on each side. The arm articulation mechanism has been changed from a ball joint to a spring-loaded gimbal joint. One thing I like about this gimbal joint versus the ball joint of the Gen 3 is that the spring tension keeps them from flopping around. There also appears to be no slop on the joint itself, and it's sealed with Teflon O-rings. These O-rings sealing the joint are particularly nice, since sharpening can be a dusty business. The arm joints also have a stop which negates the need for the high shelf ledge on the Gen 3 to catch the rods and stones. On both systems, the towers move in a synchronized fashion towards or away from the vise to set your sharpening angle. The Gen 3 had a pin and pivot style angle setting mechanism which seemed to generate some friction at the widest and lowest angles. The Generation 4 Pro has replaced this design with a rack and pinion system and two spring-loaded sealed ball bearing slides. This design yields a significantly smoother experience when adjusting the angle. The push button on the angle selector handle also reduces friction on the ball and detent locking mechanism, which like the ball bearing slides is conducive to smooth angle selection. With all these differences in mind, I'm going to demonstrate the sharpening process on the Gen 4 because you can't have a sharpening review without actually sharpening a knife. Today we'll be sharpening this knife that I made back in 2020 as part of the Knife Talk build along. Since then, I've used it around the shop to open boxes and more recently to cut sheets of sandpaper to shape for my disc grinder. I'm not 100% sure what stones will come default with the Gen 4 Pro kit, but I'm assuming it's the same as the Gen 3, which will be three sets of stones ranging from 100 to 1000 grit. So that's as far as I plan on taking this blade. I start off by clamping the blade in the vise. This blade is just tall enough to not need the use of the depth key. I then use a sharpie to mark the secondary bevel. 
In the case of this knife, I'm going to be trying to match the existing bevel on the blade. To verify that I have the machine set up at the right angle, I make some light passes to see if I'm removing any Sharpie. The goal here isn't to remove any material, but to only lightly remove the Sharpie that you marked on your secondary bevel. After a few movements of the angle, I found that this blade was originally sharpened to a slicey 18.5 degrees. Since this is not a total reprofiling of the secondary bevel, I started with a 200 grit stone. Keep in mind if you want some super aggressive stones, Wicked Edge does sell some that are 50 and 80 grit. I generally start each grit by aggressively back and forth sharpening one side, then move to the other side. Then I'll make some alternating passes to smooth out the grit scratches and make sure that I have an even bevel. At this point, I'll also verify visually that I have a burr. This burr will be reduced in size as you work up the grits. In between each grit, I spray down the blade with some alcohol and wipe it to remove any grit that has been left behind on the blade. This prevents my higher grit stones from being contaminated with the left behind grit of a lower grit stone. I follow the sequence that I just outlined on each grit up to a thousand, after which I strop the edge to remove any remaining burr. You can do this with a hand leather strop or pick up a set of these wicked edge leather strops to use on the machine itself. And just like that, you have an extremely sharp knife. So here are my final thoughts on the two machines. If you already have a generation three, upgrading may not be worth it. The Gen 3 is still an excellent machine that will yield the user years of effective sharpening. If you're a professional sharpener or a semi-professional in the market for a new system, I'd say the Gen 4 Pro is worth your time to consider. The precision upgrades in this version really seem to give it the supercar status in comparison to some of the other sharpeners on the market. If you're new to the knife making world or a hobbyist knife enthusiast, then this Pro system probably isn't the perfect fit for you from a monetary perspective especially since you can get very comparable results with the more budget-minded versions of this machine in the Wicked Edge product line, like the Obsidian or the Wicked Edge Go. For my part, I'm excited to use this Generation 4 Pro machine on my future knife builds, and I'm thankful to Wicked Edge for providing this machine for testing on the channel. If you got something out of this review or have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below, and until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.